Companion planting is the time-honored practice of growing plants that mutually benefit each other. It is combining plants together as opposed to just having one type of monoculture. Full disclosure though, most advice you receive about this is not research-based. It's mostly observational wisdom that gardeners and farmers share with one another. There have been some studies done, but no formal trials have exist at this time. Most plant groupings like this are mostly done in the vegetable garden. So we're gonna to talk today about companion plants for the spring vegetable garden. There's five main reasons for planting certain crops together. The first is shade. Large plants can provide shade for tender leaves. An example of that is tomatoes and basil. The tomatoes can shade these really tender basil leaves that you know get sunburned really easy. The next one is support. Tall plants like corn can serve as climbing stakes. An example of this is planting corn and beans together, like pole beans or even other types of twining plants can just climb right up that corn stalk and you don't have to provide a stalk for them. Soil, nutri soil nutrients is another reason. Some plants can favorably change soil nutrients for other plants. An example of this is legumes like peas or beans that add nitrogen to the soil. Soil health is another big reason to do companion planting. Plants like onions and marigolds exude chemicals that change soil biochemistry to ward off pests or suppress competition. This is called allelopathy. The most famous example of this that you may know of is the black walnut tree, where you're always warned not to plant things near. But in the vegetable garden, think any nicotine plant like tobacco, peas or broccoli should not be planted near each other or, or near some other plants because they will, because they're suppressing competition, will reduce the ability for the other plants to thrive. Let's talk about pests. That's the big one in the vegetable garden. So managing pests, some plants like herbs are natural insect repellents because of their strong odors. There's something about those volatile oils getting into the atmosphere that keeps those pests away. Other plants attract beneficial insects. The example for that is dill or fennel or basil. And the reason that they attract beneficial insects is that these lions of the garden, these tiny little beneficial insects also like tiny little flowers. And so anything that has those small flowers will bring in things like lace wings. You can also manage pests by growing plants that serve as traps, effectively corralling the pests in one place. Examples of this are nasturtiums or milkweed that are aphid magnets. If you've got these in your garden, you know they're always covered with aphids. When you, they're covered like that, the ladybugs are gonna stick around in your yard to enjoy the all-you-can-eat buffet. For the vegetable garden, here's a few more examples of traditional companion plantings. Dill and basil planted among tomatoes can protect from tomato hornrooms. Marigolds, especially French marigolds, repel root nematodes. It needs to be the French ones, the stinky ones. Garlic and onions use their strong smell to repel insects but exhibit allelopathy near legumes, so peas and beans, like peas and beans, so make sure to keep them separated. Zinnias, cilantro, alyssum, and parsley, again, all attract those great beneficial insects that eat aphids and other pests. The really cool thing about companion planting is because it's not a monoculture, you're mixing flowers and vegetables and herbs together to make a visually dis appealing display that encourages you, your family, and beneficial insects to hang out in the garden. And there's nothing better than that.